Windows 11 has been out for almost two years now. And while every Windows release has been met with some amount of controversy, I thought that Windows 11 in particular was actually decent at launch. I like the design, the fluidity, and the abundance of new features, like being able to have tabs in your folders or the upcoming changes to the volume mixer. Also, some things that annoyed me upon the release were mostly fixed, like not being able to right-click on the taskbar to quickly access the task manager. Though, I still can get used to this modernized right-click menu, which can be changed with something like Win Arrow Tweaker, but I mean, come on, Microsoft, allow us to bring back the old menu without having to press Shift all the damn time. With all of that being said, I really like Windows 11. It's a great operating system that I use daily and I haven't had too many issues with. Though out of the box, it still houses a lot of concern in regards to privacy. Windows 11 was built off of Windows 10, which if you recall, did not have great privacy measures to protect the user. So in this video, I want to go over the different things that you can do to make your Windows 11 experience safer and more importantly, more private. And let's get started right away with item number one, a local account. One of the easier ways to avoid privacy risks when modern Windows is to use a local account instead of a Microsoft one. Here on Microsoft.com, you can just see in the privacy dashboard how much data Microsoft collects about you if you use that account. Now, they do state that this collected data is anonymized, but there's no way to know that for sure since Windows is not open source. So head over to the settings and click on accounts. In the Your Info tab, you'll see an option to sign in with a local account instead. And here you can create a local account and switch to it. Now you should know that you will be cut off from using the Microsoft Store and other services like Office 365 since they do require that account. But on Windows, you can download various alternatives, so that shouldn't be a huge issue. With that out of the way, next I'd recommend using a tool that will save you a lot of time and make your Windows more private. And that is ONO Shut Up 10. This tool became very popular all the way back in 2015 when Windows 10 was first released, but it has been constantly updated to work with Windows 11, so you can ignore the 10 in the name. Now, the reason why I said that this will save you a lot of time is because this program and everything that it does can be done via registry edits, but obviously that would just take you a whole eternity to do. So instead here, you can use these switches to quickly enable or disable certain telemetry within Windows. But before you start you know, changing things, I would highly recommend creating a system restore point, which you can make by selecting actions here at the top and then clicking on create a system restoration point. This will ensure that after making any of the changes, you will have a backup just in case anything goes wrong. Also, make sure to select local machine here as well. Otherwise, it will only apply these changes to the current user that's logged in. So unless that's what you want to do, make sure to keep it on local machine. Now you could spend time checking every little setting that ONO provides you and just scrolling through here, you will notice that the list is very, very extensive. And actually, I think that visually it gives you a good idea of just how much data is being sent to Microsoft at any given time. It's actually pretty ridiculous. Anyway, instead of changing everything individually, I'd recommend again, selecting actions at the top and picking apply only recommended settings. This way, ONO will only apply the settings that do not affect any of the essential Windows functions like your fingerprint reader, for instance. And speaking of which, after applying the recommended settings, you can further tweak these options to your liking. Like for instance, I'll disable app access to motion, phone calls, call history, radios, and eye tracking, because I just don't use these things on my PC. Like when was the last time I needed eye tracking on my PC? Like that's that seems ridiculous, right? Now, if you do need any of these functions, then you can just keep it as default. But again, the reason why I like ONO is because it gives you the flexibility to give you exactly what you want. So it's awesome. And when you make your custom settings here at the top, again, if you click on file, you can export your settings, which you can then apply on other PCs that you have around the house or office. So that's another feature that I really, really like about ONO. Once you're happy with your settings, just exit the program, restart your computer, and as the app notifies me here, after a big feature update, these settings might get reset. So after updating, it's just a good idea to just run this program one more time if that does happen. Okay, moving on to number three turn on BitLocker. If you're using Windows 11 Pro Edition, you get access to BitLocker. 
which is a proprietary Windows encryption feature designed to protect your hard drive in case your PC gets stolen and the criminal has to input a password to get your data. Encrypting your drive is especially important on a laptop like this because it's a portable device and it can be stolen really easily, especially like at an airport or something like that or at a cafe. But personally, I have BitLocker enabled even on my desktop PC at home just to be secure. I mean, extra security never hurt nobody. So to do this, just go to this PC and here you will see the list of all your drives. So just right click on the one you want to encrypt. Then here, just turn on BitLocker and make sure to select a strong and very importantly, memorable password that you can remember, or at least, you know, you can keep that password somewhere so you don't lose it in case you're going to sell your PC or just need to access that drive on another machine. Next up, and you're not gonna like this, but let's review our user account control settings. To do that, in the start menu, type in UAC and press enter. Essentially, what UAC does is alert you every time the system tries to install something. This could be as simple as a video game, a browser, you name it. And by default, it is set to notify me only when apps try to make changes to my computer. However, I'd recommend putting this on the highest setting, which is always notify me when apps try to install software or make changes to my computer, or even when I make changes to Windows settings. The reason I said that you're not gonna like this is because I know plenty of people who actually completely disable user account control, which does result in better overall experience because you don't get annoyed by all the pop-ups asking you if you, it's okay to install something. But on the other hand, UAC is a great security measure that prevents many, many, and I do stress that many virus attacks from malicious app changes and more, which is why I recommend keeping it enabled. Second to last thing I wanted to discuss is bloatware and malicious apps in general. Now, it's important to distinguish what is a, you know, what, what each term is. For example, bloatware is something that just takes up hard drive space on your PC you don't use it and maybe didn't even install on your computer to begin with. Malicious apps, on the other hand, are something that you possibly install on your PC willingly and then later realize that the app might be dangerous and now it's extremely hard to remove. Well, either way, Windows 11 comes with a lot of bloatware right out of the box. Like, check this out, like things like Candy Crush, which I mean, nothing against Candy Crush, but do I really need to have that pre-installed on my system? While you can remove all of these apps and bloatware individually by using the official Windows uninstaller, I'd instead recommend using the Geek uninstaller, a free to download software, which is on another level when it comes to removing unwanted programs on your PC. And you'll see why in a minute. After downloading it, just run it here. And by right clicking on a particular app, you can uninstall it like normal, but then, after that, it also runs a scan to remove any leftover files. Now, the reason why this is so cool is because usually when just using the regular uninstaller, a lot of files and registry items get just left out there in your hard drive. So this will just make sure to collect all of them and delete them. And you can actually keep them if you want because later on it just gives you a list like this which you can select which files you may want to keep. Here at the top, if you click on view, you can also make it show UWP apps from the Windows Store. And this is where you will see like this huge list of bloatware that Windows 11 has that I was talking about. So just run through the list and only keep the apps you really need. Also in the future, if you need to remove anything, just use Geek Uninstaller until Microsoft implements a similar cleanup function in stock Windows which I do hope happens actually. Finally, to make your overall security even better, I'd recommend installing Surfshark. So just open up your browser and go to surfshark.com forward slash download slash windows and get the installer from here. After installing and logging in, you'll get access to a VPN, an antivirus, and also Surfshark search. A VPN is just a no brainer in today's age. It will hide your traffic from your ISP and secure your online connection. As far as the Surfshark antivirus goes, it does feature a much better design compared to Windows Defender, and it has some nice features like the webcam protection, which will avoid you using a tape on your webcam and looking all goofy. Lastly, I really like Surfshark Search as well. It gives me ad-free and organic searches, which in the end results in downloading less potentially malicious files in general. So in conclusion, Windows 11, just like its predecessor, Windows 10 is still full of privacy holes that honestly, in my opinion, we will be stuck with forever. 
By that, I mean that unless there's some big revolutionary regulatory privacy laws released, I suspect that current and future Windows releases will have this evasive privacy and data collection. But that being said, at least we are able to turn off most of it by using tools such as ONO Shut Up 10. Speaking of which, I wanted to mention a program called Windows Tweaker as well. Just like Shut Up 10, it's free to download and allows you to not only tweak privacy settings, but visual look of Windows itself. Oh, and I know someone would have mentioned this in the comments, but there is also Windows 11 Enterprise Edition. It is a special version of Windows 11 that bypasses a lot of privacy concerns. However, it's not available in to the general public. So keep that in mind. But that'll be all from me. If you like this video, this took us a while to make, so make sure to give it a giant thumbs up and check out our other video right over here where we ran Linux. You know, Linux is very privacy focused on an almost two decade old laptop. That's right. So yeah, I'll leave that video right here, just like I said, and that'll be all from me. Take care.